it is my privilege to present to you an excerpt from my first self-published book, The Science of Agency. This book is a labor of love as much as it was a labor of indignation against a world that seems to have lost its sense of agency. This excerpt contains what the entire book argues to be our human failure to focus on the wonder of our place on a consciousness spectrum. It tells the story from the perspective of the least conscious but arguably mechanically superior kind of organisms on this hypothetical spectrum of consciousness. It tells the story of a bacterium while it magically perceives the mechanically frail but wonderfully conscious being called Darwin. Please enjoy this excerpt from my labor of sanctified love towards our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A parable from the mindless inner being of a bacterium at the beginning of the spectrum of consciousness. Let us indulge in a parable. Imagine we are all a single-celled organism, perhaps a bacterium, but together we are bacteria. There are countless others like us, but we do not rely on them to reproduce. Instead, each individual bacterium's progeny carries on independently. Recently, we have become aware of an organism called Darwin. He is distinct in that he cannot reproduce alone. He needs a counterpart, a she. Moreover, he comprises approximately 30 trillion to 37 trillion cells. Each of these cells must replicate before he can offer just one cell to this she for reproduction. What perplexes us about this Darwin creature is his vulnerability. With trillions of cells, he still seems fragile. He consumes an immense amount of energy and even serves as a habitat for millions of our kind. Some of our species can even compromise his health or aid in the digestion of his food. The multitude of tasks that both Darwin and his cells undertake for reproduction seems astonishing. Beyond mere replication, he moves in pursuit of food, expending even more energy. Due to his size, he navigates vast distances to sustain his massive cellular community. He engages with light, which he refers to as seeing, resonates with sound to hear, and interacts with objects to feel. As a simple bacterium, we cannot relate to these seemingly extraneous energy expenditures. The physical pressures Darwin endures seem astronomically greater than those we face. Surprisingly, the bonds that keep his cells attached appear weaker than the protein bonds that hold your single cell intact. Some bacteria, we all know, can endure pressures up to 10 atmospheres without any critical strain on our chemical bonds. The crux of this parable? Darwin asserts that from a purely mechanistic survival perspective, his species evolved through incremental enhancements of their survival capabilities. Each step saw them grow with more cells coming together, resulting in an organism that partakes in a myriad of intricate and energy-consuming activities. He has persuaded his kind that they are the zenith of mechanistic survival perfection, destined to explore the vastness of space. However, from your humble bacterial perspective, we would like Darwin to know that his claims seem scientifically baffling if we are being modest in our disgust with him and his species' arrogance. After all, you and your fellow bacteria have already been launched into space, using volcanoes long before his species even existed. And we survived the journey. Then there is the fact that we can occupy any environment that any other organism can. In fact, we can even survive in space. The mere existence of such a frail species feels like a contradiction to physics and everything he claims. This Darwin organism's theory is obviously critically dependent on the worst possible commitment of confirmation bias 
ever perpetrated on science and any organism on the consciousness spectrum. Darwin's stories still succeed, even today, in gaining acceptance because the confirmation bias is especially important for humans and all non-single-celled organisms. If they deny Darwin's claims, then their own existence becomes exposed to the true forces of nature. There are many problems with this. When you realize that the mechanisms can only favor other outcomes than the ones they have the bias about, then their own existence becomes illegitimate. That illegitimacy is the reason to keep on accepting the delusion. All single-celled organisms will forever keep pointing out the illegitimacy of Darwinian delusions. In the end, it will free all those clever humans from their collective confirmation bias and help them to restore the true humanity. The only organisms able to do the science of agency no living system or any part of nature is purposeless or without divine meaning. All creatures need redemption from our self-worship, no matter where we are on the consciousness spectrum. The essence of this parable is that despite the apparent mechanical vulnerabilities of humans and other seemingly improbable organisms, they exemplify God's intention for conscious communion and mutual love. This purpose is woven into the very fabric of life. And we can tell this parable with confidence because after all, we are just bacteria devoid of consciousness or cognition. Maybe we can believe and forgive Darwin if he admits that all those incremental enhancements were not mechanical or physical enhancements to occupy more environments, but in fact, enhancements for the sake of consciousness, unique sensory awareness and cooperation, however incremental they might have been. Maybe he was searching for his mechanically useless but wonderfully conscious mind. Or maybe all the other organisms on the spectrum of consciousness were looking for agency that suits their kind of awareness and not mechanistic perfection, as we all know, belongs to the single-celled end of the consciousness spectrum. It is important to note that the claims made in this parable are not against the gradual process of evolution, but certainly against the mechanisms at work. The preceding arguments leading up to this parable describe the pertinent physical aspect to be considered in these kinds of nth body problems and should make it clear that if the Darwinian hypothesis is actually modeled to find the actual mechanistic probabilities then the bacteria's parable will either be confirmed by data and modeling or not. Apart from the IIT this kind of dedicated modeling is yet another analytical way to confirm our agency. This excerpt from my book, hopefully, provoked you to rethink many aspects of what you have come to believe about our place in the world and the nature of God's agency as he crafted the entire spectrum of consciousness with all the most intricate life forms. In my first attempt at publishing a book, The Science of Agency, you can explore this extremely pertinent question in an age where we might be misplacing our agency towards the mechanistic side of this wonderful spectrum. In the description below, you will find links to the platforms where my book is published.